Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, just hanging out. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going well. I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm doing a deep dive today on the matte look filter. I'll admit it's not a filter I've used a whole lot, but every time I use it, I tend to enjoy what I come up with. And today I have kind of a deep dive on that filter, but then also some creative workflow ideas around that, kind of similar to what I did in my texture video recently, where I showed you how I use the texture uh, overlay filter or tool, and then also other things I use around it to kind of optimize it. And that's the same thing I'm doing here. So kind of a combination deep dive slash creative workflow. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just hit the subscription or subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you like the video and that helps me because it tells YouTube that you like what I'm producing and creating here. And I hope you do. So let's get into it. This is the photo that I'm starting with. I've already cropped it, but it's a photo from the Guinness Brewery in Dublin, Ireland, and after a few minutes in Luminar, I turned it into that, and that's using the matte filter as well as, you can probably tell, a few other things. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, matte look is, uh, it's over here on the creative tab, so on the second tab, and you start with the amount slider, right? So the amount is basically just how much of the effect do you want to apply to the photo. Fade basically impacts the darker areas of the image. Now, it's not gonna work at all if you have a mount at zero, so you have to turn the amount on, and then as you hit fade, you'll see that the, um, you're basically losing contrast in the darker areas of the image, so it's effectively brightening those shadows, kind of creating a flatter, low contrast image. That leads you to the next slider, which is contrast, so you can pull back a little contrast if you'd like to, and as I say in a lot of videos, these are always just sliders that depend on the image and depend on the look that you're going for. So there's not a uh, here's how you do it kind of thing. Every image is different, so I just kind of futz around, for lack of a better word, with all the different settings and see what I can come up with that I like. Okay, next is saturation. So as the name implies, it's just like how much saturation do you want to apply to your image? Do you want to have it heavily saturated or very limited, uh, limited saturation? And again, depends on the image. I tend to just kind of move it around until I get it where I like it. Okay, and the next section I think is really interesting, the color toning. So basically, you can pick a hue and a range and it's effectively picking kind of a color overlay and then the range is like how much of that is applied. So you can see it defaults on the far left, which is kind of in the red. So if I start to drag the range slider, you'll see that I'm getting more and more red across the photo, primarily in the areas where the red exists. Now. Um, on this photo, I kind of like the blue range, and so I'm kind of over there doing this sort of thing and creating a little bit of a faded blue effect on the photo. And then the vividness is how uh, vivid is that color that you're selecting. So you might drag it to create more vivid or less, that sort of thing. Again, just depends on the image. Okay, so I'm gonna hit reset, and what I'm gonna do is walk through my workflow for this image. First, I come to amount, and here I went to about 42 and a fade of about 29. And again, it's all just playing around until you figure out something that you like. There's, there's no rules here. It's all just experimentation. Contrast, I bumped that up to about a high 60s. Uh, I went at a little bit higher uh, contrast image. And then saturation, I actually bring that up a fair amount as well, 76. Then down here, range, I was at about 28. And as I said a moment ago, I was uh, 27, 28, there we go. Uh, I was here in the blue area and I landed on about 237 or something like that. And vivid, I went a little bit positive. I went to like three. So that was me just experimenting. I wanted kind of a washed out, kind of softer toned look, kind of bluish, right? That sort of thing. So let me show you, there's before, much more richly detailed and um, crisp. And after, that's what the matte look has done for me. Again, this is not a filter I would use by itself. I would stack other filters on there and you know, use some whatever creative inspiration strikes you uh, to go create the image that you want. And that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do here is go into sky replacement. And as much as that sky kind of fits the scene, I wanted to do something different. So I went in, I said load custom sky. And I actually went and got a texture. I did this in a previous video, which I'll put there. It's something that I do from time to time, but I felt like it really fit the image. And there you go, it's just dropped in. Now I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments here just to get it uh, aligned exactly where I want it. First, I'm gonna drop the horizon position to like negative 67 or something. You can kind of see that's moving down a little bit. And then the sky exposure, I drop a little bit as well, like about a 15. So not a whole lot. But what I wanted to do is 
use that texture because to me it looks like a burnt piece of paper and to me it kind of goes with the scene also um, if you're familiar with guinness they roast their barley or whatever it is that's in the beer which is kind of what i think what makes it black and gives it kind of that that uh that taste and so it kind of to me looked like a fire in the sky like hey we're burning the barley or roasting the barley i don't know it kind of went with it i also liked that it kind of picked up that orange light and if it was a little bit brighter this yellow line in the street which kind of got cropped out but that kind of leads you that way like it's yellow leading you to yellow i don't it's just kind of how i think about it but i wanted to stick a sky replacement in there because i wanted to create this kind of artistic look okay now having put a texture in the sky i also want to put a texture on the photo so i'm going to go to texture overlay and i'm going to get the same texture this is just a you can see what it is there it's just something i found on the web for free a few years ago and just downloaded it and i use it from time to time as you can see it's kind of i don't know it's got that kind of grungy i don't know it's called burl grunge i don't know where i found it um just google search if you want but it looks like a burnt piece of paper and it's something that i use a fair amount of time now the first thing i do here is go say edit mask and i hit luminosity mask because i want to build a luminosity mask for this texture okay there we go now a luminosity mask by definition is going to be built and apply more heavily to the brighter or more luminous parts of the image i don't want that i've already got a, that texture in the sky i don't need any more help in the sky because that is the brightest part of the image so i'm going to go into brush and i'm going to say mask and i'm going to say invert and there we go i've inverted it and now drop that texture more heavily into the shadowed areas but of course it's way too much so i'm bringing the opacity down to something like around 10. And I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take the hue over here to, I think it was around 155 or something like that. And again, that's just kind of playing up a little bit of that blue. Um, I've got the texture applied uh, coupled with the faded look from the matte uh, area and then the texture in the sky. And again, I'm just kind of playing. This is just something that I came up with that I thought was kind of interesting. Okay, now that I've got that done, I'm going to pop over to the Essentials tab. And that's something that... Um, I generally will start on the Essentials tab unless I'm doing like sky replacement and texture, uh, maybe even the matte look. And that's because I do kind of that stuff, which those are kind of the, the weird adjustments, for lack of a better word, before I get into the traditional adjustments. Sometimes I prefer to do weird before I do traditional. I don't know why. It's just I, I kind of want to get my sky and my texture in place. Well, I do know why. I want to get my sky and my texture in place because the rest of these adjustments are primarily global in nature. So they're going to apply to the whole image. And I wanted to get those things in place, texture in the sky, less texture in the, uh, in the rest of the photo and the matte look across it, and just kind of have that base to build upon with the rest of the adjustments that I'm going to make. Okay, so I'm going to start here, and I'm going to give it a little contrast. So I'm going to do like 30 or so, 32 here in Smart Contrast. I'm going to pull up the shadows a little bit, maybe about like that. I'm going to take the highlights down to negative 100, because I'm trying to soften or, or darken that area there kind of under this bridge where it was a little bit too bright in the sky okay next is ai enhance and i'm going to go about 31 here on that uh, ai accent and then ai sky enhancer i'm going to go to about 50 and there's no reason for that other than it kind of slightly darkened the texture a little bit it's pretty subtle i don't know that it makes a huge well, actually it doesn't make a huge difference again just something i did okay saturation and vibrance i'm going to come over here bump up the vibrance a little bit even though i've got kind of a faded photo i'm giving it a little bit of kick of color and uh, i don't know again just something that i wanted to do it just kind of worked for me here and then I'm pop over to details enhancer and i'm going to go about 40 on medium details and about 20 on sharpen so there we go something about like that even though i've got a faded photo uh with the matte look i wanted to bring back a little bit of detail because in some ways i'm creating a little bit of a vintage look uh you know the sky is kind of blowing out it looks like a chemical problem when you're developing the film it's faded like an old photo it's definitely an old place with the cobblestone streets and all that it kind of just that look kind of works for me here so i was kind of going with it and the last thing is really just a vignette to top it off. I'm going to pull this down, something about like negative 55 or so. And the size, I'm going to go about 20. Now, roundness, I want to make it a little bit more oval, so maybe about like that. Feathering, I generally go a little bit higher. I usually kind of go in the 30s or more. I do want a smooth transition. And then inner light, I'm going to do like 20-something. Uh, I am going to choose subject and drop that over here a little bit closer to this gate. Um, partly because to me that's kind of like your your eye is drawn down that way 
um, partly because that's the way the road looks, that yellow line's kind of pointing you there. It's also brighter in the distance. And so I'm just offsetting that a little bit, partly to darken up this side of the photo and partly just to kind of help lead you that way. So there's before vignette, kind of bright everywhere and after vignette. And that's really my workflow. Let me go back over here and show you the difference that the matte look made. So that's with matte look. There it is without matte look. So I like it like that, to be honest. But to me, adding the matte look, it just created a, you know, a bit better vintage kind of feel like it was an old photo. Maybe it had been colorized. Maybe it had been sitting in some attic or storehouse for 50 years kind of thing. Just kind of an older look. But primarily, I wanted to do a deep dive on matte look, which... Um, you know, it's, it's a fairly simple and straightforward uh, tool and just experimenting with the different sliders on each photo is fun. And as I said before, there's no rules here. There's no, you need to do this or that. It's not like controlling highlights or something. It's purely artistic and so season to taste in other words. And then on top of that, I wanted to add in kind of the creative workflow on how I built this photo because I did a lot of things like a sky replacement with the texture. Um, I used a luminosity mask on the matte look. I added the texture. Uh, to the rest of the photo inverted on a luminosity mask. Just a lot of different kind of tricks. And so that got me from my base photo, which is that one, to this one. And if you look at the before and after, I actually like it both ways. I, I, I've uh, a couple of different times in my life have edited this photo. And I gotta admit, like every time I edit it, I do it differently and I like it every time. So um, I also just like Guinness. So it's probably that. But um, that's the, uh, that's the workflow, my friends. So it's kind of a deep dive on that look as well as kind of a creative workflow. Hope you got some ideas from this. Hope it gives you some inspiration to go try different things with your photos. And I do appreciate you watching. As I asked before, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. Thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, don't hesitate to give me a comment, share with your friends, that kind of stuff. I'll see you soon, my friends. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care and adios.